Hi folks and welcome back for another video. I haven't done the video for a while so here we are back in the radio shack of the Woolgar Test Facility commonly known as the WTF. Anyway, um, about a year ago or a year or two ago I promised myself I would never ever build another RF amplifier so guess what's happening? I'm building another RF amplifier. So um, I've just been collecting all the bits and uh, this video we're going to document or we're going to show you uh, the process of building the high voltage power supply because as you know for an RF for a big RF amplifier using some big valves uh, we need a big massive power supply so um, I'm going to uh, take you through the build. I've collected up all the parts for it and uh, I'll quickly uh, I'll quickly show you uh, what we've got so far. Right so this power supply is going to be um, pretty big and as you can see I've already started work on it uh, I've got the frame here, this is the uh, the frame that I've uh, welded up and uh, I've just had it back from the powder coaters so you can see that the uh, the advantage of having it painted is that it covers up all my uh, dodgy welding which uh, to be honest with you actually came out quite well so th this will be uh, quite an enormous uh, power supply um, and uh, hopefully the amplifier will sit on top of it and the whole idea is that um, all the electronics are going to be in here, um, so we've got, uh, got a nice little meter there which I put in, a couple of knobs, and uh, what we're going to have here is this down here, we get rid of that box, we're going to have a load of capacitors here, and uh, because we're going to be using uh, some of these babies here which I will show you, just come along here. I've got a load of these, which are mercury, are mercury vapor rectifiers, 872s. So we're going to have four of those and a bridge rectifier. It's not going to have any semiconductor stuff in it. Well, certainly for the rectification anyway. And uh, what I've also built, again I'll show you over here, now these are the filament transformers, I've already made these up. So, so there's going to be three filament transformers um, for, those, for those four uh, 872As. And uh, so the, I hope this is all going to work, it's a bit of an experiment. These were just sort of bog standard 12 volt transformers which I've put extra windings on. Uh, so, they, so what happens with the, with the mercury vapor rectifiers, the, the cathode and the filaments are basically one in the same thing so you provide uh, about what 5 volts AC for the filaments and then the HD is, is collected on the center taps so you've got one there, one there, one there and so wiring all these up together um, in a bridge rectifier um, layout um, <clears throat> should then um, you know just does the same job as having four uh, silicon diodes like when you know, a 1N uh, four double o sevens or something like that. So we've got actually replacing the the silicon diodes with uh, eight seven two a's. So that um, so this thing here will let's just show you that's going to sit. Oops, everything's falling off. That's going to sort of sit in here, looking like that. Let's see that. I haven't mounted it obviously, so that that's that's going to have to be on spaces, and so that's going to go in there. And then what we'll do is the the, the diodes or the, the rectifiers are all going to sit on the top here, so it should, it should look quite good if nothing else. Uh, and then underneath here, we've got this is going to be the bottom compartment where we've got uh, what's that bag of relays. There's so much junk in here. I don't need that. Right. So this is the bottom compartment, and uh, so the big HT transformer is going to be on the on the bottom. There's going to be a, a little transformer for the bias to supply negative bias, and I'm going to use a switch mode power supply for the 24 volt, um, which I've got. Let's have a look. Uh, switch mode power supply. That's in here, that's a 4 amp switch mode power supply. So that will supply our 24 volts which will basically work all the uh, various control systems 
And talking of control systems, that's there's a, we've got a board there, which uh, does um, all our. Um, that's actually got some safety cutout circuitry in it, uh, but it's got the slow start. It's also got the uh, over there in the corner. That's the um, uh, uh, bias uh, supply uh, diodes and uh, uh, capacitor. I'm going to actually probably put a bit more filtering on that. I'm not entirely happy that will be adequate. It's a 33 microfarad capacitor, so it'll be all right, but it's not, you probably could do with a choke. If I got some space, I'll put a choke and probably a bigger capacitor there just to help the filtering of the, uh, the bias supply. Uh, what else can I show you? Ah, this is one of the, this is big transformer that I'm, I might use. Um, I've got another one which is in that power supply over there. That one that's, uh, uh, sitting um, um, in that unit there, there's a big, even bigger transformer than this one. This one's uh, 2 kV at uh, uh, half an amp, but it'll probably do much more than that. It's a big Parmeco oil-filled job, weighs a ton. So that's an option to use uh, for the um, for the for the main HT transformer. So anyway, I'm going to put all this lot together uh, over the next uh, couple of days. I've cut all the panels out and um, take a few little videos as we go. So let's let, uh, we'll pop back a bit later and uh, we'll see how we how we progress. Anyway, all that's it for now, and uh, we'll pop. See, we'll see you a bit later. Hi guys, and welcome back. Uh, the old uh, high voltage power supply is progressing well. Um, you may wonder why I'm dressed like this. It's because we had one inch of snow uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, the shack is quite warm actually. We've got a fire going. Um, but I've got to keep my head warm. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you something on this transformer that I've got. It's actually a real beauty. Um, you'll like this. Give me a few minutes. Right, I've, um, I've, I've actually mounted quite a few bits and pieces as you can see there. But this is the, um, this is the HT transformer that I'm going to use. And as you can see, it's an absolute beauty of a beast of a transformer. Um, but I've actually done something quite clever here. Well, I think it's... Uh, quite clever. This, this transformer, I don't know if you can see that, let me come around the other side and you can read it a bit better. So it's originally a 2.80 uh, 2.8 uh, kV transformer at um, half an amp. I hope you can be able to see that. Um, but anyway, the, this uh, thing was originally designed with a center tap, so the two ends of the uh, of each uh, secondary was uh, earthed at that point there. Uh, so um, when I had this originally in another power supply, I basically had uh, um, full wave rectification, uh, basically uh, diodes in each leg of the uh, of the secondary, and then the uh, the center tap effectively going to earth. Uh, but I thought to myself, well, effectively what we've got here too separate transformer secondaries and if I make them in parallel each winding is basically rated at half an amp that will give us 2.8 kV at um, at one amp effectively uh, so if I bridge rectify this uh, we've I mean this transformer will easily give well over an amp uh, certainly intermittent duty I mean the the, the ratings on that data sheet there uh, are really uh, for um, continuous duty so this this is actually the ultimate transformer to use for a uh, for a big high voltage linear amplifier power supply uh, you know not only has it got the volts but it's 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 uh, it's got the current as well so uh, I'm quite pleased with that but I'm gonna actually um, I've actually taken out the uh, the center tap there and I'm going to um, attach some wires and basically put both windings in parallel so that should be quite cool I think um, I'll show you what I'm doing at the moment. So we're going to got all these capacitors I've got to mount, um, and I've also got the toroids, uh, the filament transformers, which I'm going to put into the uh, into the box there. I think, um, which is a job for this evening. So what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll um, I'll show you how I've got on with that. I've been working on this uh, power supply over the weekend, and I'm actually um, wired everything up. I'm just actually testing it at the moment. So you caught me at a good time. Um, I'll just quickly show you what I've done. So really just wired everything up. You can see the 
uh, filter capacitors there. I've actually got it on at the moment, running about 2.5 kV. Uh, and everything seems to be working. The meter showing 2.5 kV. This uh, transformer that I'm using to test it uh, is um, 2000 volts transformer. Uh, we've got it hooked up to the Variac just so we can test things. Um, on the AVO there we've got about uh, it is about 2.7, 2.8 kV actually no correction, 2.5 so so the meeting on the AVO and also from my meter there is about the same, The meter, this meter um, uses some op amps <clears throat> on that control board down there you can see there, we've got to keep, be very careful to keep our fingers out um, and the, everything seems to be fine. The bleeders are all all working. We've got some big bleeder resistors over there, and uh, that one on that side there. That's for the soft start. That's not being used at the moment because we're running everything off the Variac. And just to show the uh, these are home brew filament transformers, which are not really sweating or anything. And. Uh, and the lovely 872A mercury arc rectifiers or mercury vapor rectifiers. And they're just about glowing at the moment. I'll um I'll dim the lights and we can have a look at that. Let's just uh move back a little bit. They're actually passing a little bit of current through the bleeding resistor, so uh you can uh you can just about see the glow on the tubes. I think the RCA tubes have got a slightly bigger gap. Those are the two in the middle. And the ones on the either end are Chinese 872As. But I think the, the RCA ones, the originals, actually look a, look a bit better. You can see them glowing. Now when, once these things pass much more current they'll even glow even more uh, once we connect everything up to the amplifier when we eventually build it. So. Uh, yeah, should be look should look quite good. Right, I'm just going to show you a bit more of the uh, progress I'm making on this power supply. Uh, so we've got the, this front panel mounted, and you can see uh, two variacs. And the one on the right uh, is the uh, smaller variac, which we are using for the negative bias. And the one on the left, uh, which, as you can see, is absolutely enormous. This is actually an 18 amp variac. Uh, we're going to use that for varying the primary uh, voltage and current for the uh, HD transformer, which you can see here. Uh, this is a real uh, big thing, as I mentioned before. Um, we're going to parallel the uh, secondaries there, which you can just about see. I haven't done that yet. Should give us 2.78 kV at about an amp, so should be plenty of. Uh, uh, current and voltage there for the uh, for the linear. Uh, so just looking down there, we've got a toroidal transformer with a um, that's for the bias supply. You've got a choke there, which is also on the negative bias supply. Uh, hopefully, should smooth it out a bit. And uh, moving round, uh, switch mode power supply uh, supplying 24 volts. And the idea of that is that. Um, it basically supplies control voltages for the relays and uh, the uh, circuitry protection circuitry in the uh, in the main uh, in the main electronics unit. Um, what else can I show you? Yeah, down in the corner we've got a uh, timer relay, which is for the um, basically switches on the HT after about 45 seconds because uh, you need to give a bit of time for the uh, 872A uh, mercury vapor rectifiers to warm up uh, before you switch on the HT. So that's the um, that's the idea of that. Anyway, um, I'm going to continue putting it all together. We've uh, got a few of the panels in now, and uh, shouldn't be too long before we can um, finally finish it off. Hi guys, and <clears throat> welcome back again. Well, after much uh, toil and struggle, um, well, not well, too bad actually. This is the finished article. This is the high voltage power supply all done and dusted and uh, all the panels are on it all looks nice and shiny once we get rid of the backing paper from the alley and uh, I'm quite pleased with this actually it's come out quite nicely and I'm going to give you a quick demo of it all working 
Uh, that's the uh, bottom panel, that's the uh, variax behind there. And we've got the high voltage, uh, sorry, the negative bias supply with its variac. And then that's the main control panel. And then there's our lovely 572A's uh, Mercury vapor rectifiers. And I've put a little bit of a protection thingamajig here, screen to stop the um, people touching it. But I don't think it'll be that many people touching it because not many people come in here except for me. Uh, so there we go. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So so immediately you can see we've got that's a negative bias and I can actually adjust that down and up and down. You can see that. So I'm leaving on 100 volts at the moment and what we do next we have to put the heaters on and then what I'll also do is the high voltage. We've actually got a delay on this for about one and a half minutes. Um, so if you look at these valves, it's quite interesting to see how each of these valves behaves when it's uh, when the heaters are on. So that Chinese one sort of goes all gassy, and you've got this mercury which sort of forms on the uh, on the outside, of the, well, the inside of the glass, I should say. That's the RCA one, which isn't so gassy, but also forms mercury on the inside. I presume it's all con it's the vapor uh, con con condensing, condensating, condensing um, on the inside of the tube. On the, the, the glass is relatively cool um, compared to the heated mercury, so um, that's what's happening there. And that's uh, I mean, that other Chinese ones. Not so doesn't seem to be so gassy. Um, that one behaves more like one of the RCA tubes. So look at that. It's just, I presume that I just presume it's something to do with the manufacturing process. So um, I'm not going to get any volts at the moment because we have to wait for this um, uh, timer relay to uh, interact, and it does take a, a little bit of. It, it, it's about a minute and a half, I think. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't sort of set it any quicker than that. Um, it's, um, it's it's I think the relay was something like naught to. Oh, there we go. So there, there we've got the mercury arc vapor rectifiers on, and we have. Just zoom in on there. 3.5 kV. Now, if I tool with the. Well, that's as far as it goes. That's 3.8 k. Uh, 3.7, 3.8 kV. So, and obviously these um. There is a bit of current being drawn uh, through the uh, <coughs> through the bleeders, probably about um, probably close to about 100 milliamps, um, especially at this especially at this sort of voltage. Uh, so that's why these tubes actually glow a little bit. And I think uh, you know, obviously, when we build up the amplifier, which I'm going to show you in due course, um, <coughs> there will be you know when the, when the thing is actually you know drawing plate current, uh, which will be a lot more than. 100 milliamps. Um, these things will glow quite nicely, and if you're using something like SSB or AM, you know these will actually all um, modulate with the signal. So it'll look quite uh, quite freaky, if nothing else. So there we go. That's the whole construction. Uh, it took me about um, well, probably about six weeks, something like that, maybe a bit less. We've also got to do the. I've got to earn a living, so. Uh, don't always get too much time to do these things, but that's it. And next stage, we build the RF amplifier, which will be a bit of a surprise because we're using a bit of a funny tube, which I will tell you about in due course. Thanks for watching.